you all rise and join us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's hard to figure out how to dress anymore. One day it's 40, the next day it's 90. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. From, here on, from here on out. Okay, welcome to the June monthly town board meeting. Approval of minutes, monthly town board meeting, May 6, 2021. So Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Committee reports, conservation board. Okay, the conservation board met on May 11th. There was a lot of discussion, a lot of technical terms back and forth. I'll just give the quick highlights of that. Um, the first one was dealing with a reloc uh, relocated pool equipment. This is a repeat one for 761 Old Albany Post. Um, the positives of this, and that, that's something I want to stress to people, is the applicant uh, provided um, a couple of options. Um, this was a case of where to put the actual equipment, and the uh, option that the Conservation Board uh, liked the most was to place the equipment in the barn. But uh, the discussions back and forth were good and positive, and, uh, and I can't stress enough that it's very important that the applicants work and especially work ahead of time with the wetlands inspectors to try and achieve some common ground on these issues. Um, the next item uh, is, a, is, this is a repeat item as well. This is an installing a, a swimming pool. Um, this is uh, regarding mitigation plans, uh, actual, um, the pond itself, it's evaluation, it's, it's closeness to the wetlands buffers. Um, there's concerns about um, as the applicant said, if I can't place it inside the buffer, I have to cut down a series of trees. And obviously, that is a concern as well. Um, so the, the, the bottom line to that is the Conservation Board is going to go out to the site, which is common, uh, and, and see if there's some alternative or some capability um, to be able to come up with some, something, a uh, good compromise. Also, um, additional was the uh, 80 Justin's Way garrison. Um, this. This one's a tougher one because it actually has to cross an actual uh, wetland itself, uh, which is, you know, much harder. We, we have a quickly we have a buffer that's 100 feet away from streams and, and uh, waterways and so forth uh, and wetlands, and those we don't really want any kind of intrusion into. But when you're actually crossing um, an actual waterway itself, this is important to make sure we get right. Um, so that, again, that will require a, a visit from the Conservation Board. Um, we have uh, another issue which uh, was reported to me by the Wetlands Inspector um, regarding up on um, 165 Cloud Bank Road. This involved uh, an actual uh, leak from a, uh, a project that was approved to drain down the dam. Um, according to their contractor, the actual clay, which is, of course, is a not a natural component in this area, um, was in fact um, was a, believed to be originally placed in there by the original con, uh, construction. Um, there was a back and forth discussion with it. Obviously, the DEC was involved as well because the actual clay made its way down to the Hudson, um, and they uh, were part of this. But the follow-ups will be basically be occurring on our end. They were, of course, placed on a stop hold, uh, which was a which was a natural, quick thing to do because, I, of course, we have to stop this problem and we have to make sure that we have assurances. So there were precaution plans discussed and, uh, you know, a discussion as to do we really need to continue since half of it was drained. And, uh, but the bottom line comes down to the applicant does want to continue. They are proposing a plan that will now be able to, because this was a big thing, to be able to detect any kind of clay release within minutes. Um, and that obviously would be much more favorable uh, than, than what was happening before. Um, the, there, there will be an ongoing discussion with the wetlands inspector as well with that one, and that's ongoing. The other thing also was uh, a, on 7 Lachieu, uh basically there's going to be uh, pesticide applications for approximately 26 acres. Um, this is to be done to control invasive species such as barberry, bamboo, bittersweet. Um, the, again, the applicant put together a very good plan program, and this was something where, in fact, they were able to make sure that um, they are following a process to where they're not, of course, going to be hurting any of the streams and, and waterways in the area. So um, kudos was given to them by the Conservation Board for 
planning ahead of time and coming in with, with a very good plan. And that um, basically looks like that's going to be going forward. Um, and the next meeting is June 8th. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Recreation. Good evening. The Phillipstown Recreation Commission had its first in-person meeting this year on May 25th. And we are heard from the recreation di director that the six-week soccer program and t-ball program are underway. After school and preschool registration are open for enrollment and people are enrolling. And it, the registration has been good so far. The summer camp is already full for the summer, but there is a waiting list if anyone would like to get on the waiting list. Um, the vaccination clinics, as you know, have been going on at the Phillipstown Recreation Center, and they will be ending on June 15th. That will be the last clinic, but anyone who needs a vaccine can certainly go to Drug World. They will have all of the vaccines available by that time. Um, the Phillipstown Recreation Commission also discussed the opening of the New Leaf Community Garden, and that will open June 7th with garden um, plot holders starting to um, plant their gardens and there are still plots available so please visit the new community garden new leaf community garden website if you would like a plot thank you judy you're welcome phillips town hub the phillips town hub has concluded its virtual marathon in the month of may which was mental health awareness month and would like to thank everyone who participated there was tremendous participation from across phillips town and the support is tremendously appreciated by all at the Hub. Thank you. All right, our thanks to the Hub. Um, just to back up for a minute, the, still uh, the town board is stressing the importance of getting vaccinated. Um, there was a press conference today at Rec Department. We do have walk-in appointments there. As Judy said, you can walk into Drug World, but you know, let's keep going. Putnam County is leading the way in this, and Phillipstown especially. Uh, there's over a 71% vaccination rate in the county. So um, the only way we're gonna get over this thing is to get everybody in this country vaccinated and then everybody around the world. So let's keep at it. Planning Board. Okay, the Planning Board had two meetings this month. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the whole Planning Board members for participating in those two meetings this week. It's uh, uh, this month, and it may have a few times because we're very busy with the golf course and everything like that. But I wanna thank everyone on the Planning Board for being flexible and uh, you know, putting a lot of extra time in this past month. Thank you very much. Uh, correspondence, just want to know that Neil uh, Zuckerman, the chairman of the board, of, of the planning board, did announce that they will not be meeting in August. They're getting back, going back that, to that, that this will be the first time in many years they haven't, uh, will not meet in August. Also too, he polled the board, the majority of the people, board members of the planning board would like to remain on Zoom meetings for, for up until through June. Uh, he'll probably poll the, the members again this coming month's meeting and see what they have to say. Again, we had two meetings this month. The first meeting was May 13th, and that was the Garrison Golf Course um, Shakespeare Festival. Um, I've been talking about this for many months, so I'm going to make everything very brief. Uh, we went that particular night, we went, took the EAF Part 2 and went line by line, which is a pretty big packet, line by line, and each member of the board had comments about each one or had questions about each one. And they finished that, but we started EAF part three, but we ran out of time. Uh, so we're gonna pick that up at next month's meeting. The meeting was adjourned at 10.45. Next meeting was on May 20th. We started out with a public hearing, the Allison uh, Desmond Fish Library. Um, they were looking to put an applicant, as I've been talking about the last several months, a solar array ribbon and a discovery trail into the meadow there. Um, as the last month's public hearing, we had a lot of people that weren't really in favor of the solar panel array. Uh, so the, the uh, Desmond Fish Library removed that from their plans. Uh, once they said they were removing, there was really no other public comment. The only, only public comment they was, was positive, saying they were very in favor of it, that the array was, uh, was removed. Uh, so we're gonna move forward on that, and next month they should, should be approval, should be approved. Next on the agenda was Mark Cohen, 242 Route 403. He's in a, going through the process to, uh, to build a single-family resident home of 2,300 square feet. As I've been talking about this over the last several months as well, that was approved. Next thing on the agenda was Riverview Industries, Route 9 in Cold Spring. That's up there across from Kevin Riker's. It's part of his building 
across the street, he's using that as a parking lot for vehicles, trucks, heavy equipment, and so forth like that. Uh, the Conservation Board approved the site plan. The applicant did not did submit a DLT, but it's waiting a response for them. The EAF long form and EAF part one, but not part two, has been submitted. The planning board is requesting that Max Garfinkel, our wetlands inspector, join the next month's meeting, as the planning board has many concerns and questions regarding the site. We would like to see they would like to also see a stormwater management plan. Cannot schedule a public hearing until the following what I just discussed was completed. Last on the agenda was Christopher Flagler and Heidi Schneider, 699 Albany Post Road, a garrison in New York. The applicant is looking to build an addition to their home. Uh, to an, uh, has an existing four bedroom home covered with a garage and an existing. They wanted, uh, uh, the addition is gonna be 1,762 square feet on two levels. Uh, I was referred to the garrison firehouse and a planning board. I was also before the zoning board in April and the zoning board approved their plans. They need to put a new septic system in for the additional, for the additional uh, part of the building, that the, and it was been approved by the Board of Health of Putnam County Board of Health. It will require a pump-up system. They're doing this as there are no good records of the current septic system. Back in the day when they built these houses, people just you know, put septics in, but there's not a lot of records. So they thought it was best that they put a new septic system in and keep the existing system, system in, in, in the new one just for the addition. Um, so next week, next month, they plan that there'll be a public hearing. Meetings adjourned at 945. Next meeting will be June 17th. Thank you. Bobby's putting in the overtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I would like to make a comment about the, uh, the fish library and the solar arrays. It, it feels like a classic case of not in my backyard. Um, you know, we're, we're very environmentally conscious in this town, it feels like, until it suddenly has an impact uh, on somebody's or perceived impact on somebody's property values. I think that could have been hidden with uh, the right landscaping. And if we don't start putting in more of these arrays and having local solar, we're gonna to continue to rely on fossil fuels. And so far that hasn't worked out. So uh, it's a shame to see that go down. Well, Rich, they, they removed it for now, but there's a possibility that in the future they could bring it back in. And if they do, they just have to start the whole process over. We did discuss that yeah. at that night, but uh, as of right now, it's off the table. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Bob. Zoning. Uh, I was unable to attend the zoning meeting, but I did watch the tape. That Bob D. runs some meeting. It's exciting to watch. Bob, you want to talk to him? <laughs> <laughs> um, there was several items. There was a continuation of review for the application for Jenna Garrard and Jesse Husted, 28 and 30 Hudson River Lane. This applicant seeks a special use permit to combine two existing lots and construct a one 5,000 square foot home with a detached garage. The application was reviewed and it was still uh, not felt to be complete, so there's gonna be another review at the next month's meeting. There was two public hearings, Eben Shapiro and Sue Adkins, 420 Indian Brook Road. This applicant seeks a variance to construct a garage with a side yard setback issue. Uh, the public hearing was held and approved unanimously. <coughs> Second was Anthony and Diane Franick at 176 East Mountain South. The applicant seeks a variance for a garage with a footprint that exceeds 1,000 square feet, uh, which is above the limit for a secondary structure. The public hearing was held and that variance also passed unanimously. New business, there was an application for re review for Seth and Kate Anderson, 34 Arden Drive in Garrison. These applicants seek a variance for a 170 square four square foot addition and a 280 square foot porch on a pre-existing non-conforming home. That application was review and found reviewed and found complete and scheduled for public hearing on June 14th, which will be the next meeting of the zoning board. Here. Beautiful. Two approvals, one meeting. Yep. Highway. Highway, Phillipstown Town Board members from Carl Fresenda work performed by the Phillipstown Highway Department for the month of May. We hope everyone enjoyed Memorial Day and remembered those who courageously gave their lives. The highway crews were busy this month with the seasonal chores of raising basins, replacing pipes, and filling potholes. Also, grading of the dirt roads has begun. Work for the new highway garage project is starting to be put in motion. Bids went out mid-May for the project. Currently, there are many interested parties. Dumping on town roads continues to be a problem. Mattress, some new and still wrapped, were dumped on the side of Old Omni Post Road and Route 9. 
The sheriffs were called, but this needs to stop. We are asking residents to please call the sheriff's department if you see anyone dumping alongside of the town road. Provide any details you can. The highway department received 25 phone calls for the month of May. Approximately $2,500 was spent in vehicle maintenance for the month of May. Submitted by Carl Frizen, the highway superintendent. That wasn't a queen size mattress, was it? Cause you need one? You need one? No, no, Nolan needs a bed. I was going to buy one for him, but now I can. Yeah, might have got wet though, last week. <laughs> That'll yeah, dry it. That'll dry it. That'll dry it. He it's likes up. He likes camping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, John. Yeah. Building and land acquisition. So as uh, John just reported, the bids went out for the highway garage. That project is moving ahead. Um, we're going to be looking to get pricing for construction management from two additional firms. I reached out to Storm King and Baxter today to get proposals. Um, so, and I had Justin send off the details to them. So hopefully we'll get some pricing soon and then we'll be able to make a decision on who will uh, uh, get us through that project because as we learned, it's important to have a construction manager wish we had one for town hall <laughs> that would have saved us a lot of, a lot of trips down here but uh they really do handle a lot of things um as far as the legal aspects it's good to have them right now we have the palumbo group reviewing the bids when they come in they they uh, put together the whole bid packet for us and walk the contractors through it to make sure that everybody's on the same page you're getting apples to apples and then as you go through the process they're cracking the whip making sure things are on time that they keep minim extras to a minimum and that anything that comes in as an additional charge is fully reviewed. Um, so it, it'll make life a lot easier having those services. Doesn't come cheap, but I can't imagine doing another job <clears throat> without one. It's just, it became sort of a full-time job for the board to be here at Town Hall continuously during this process. So we do need to get that done and we do need to get the highway garage done. It's. Uh, I mean, that was a building that was built in 1950, probably a 20-year longevity expectation on that building, and here we are in 2021, and it's still there. It's barely there. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> we do need to get things up to spec, and including our fueling stations. Those have to meet all the DEC standards. Um, the work conditions inside the garage for ventilation, lighting, safety, all of those things. That building has just run its course, so... We're looking forward to getting that done. We're figuring uh, once the bid is awarded, it'll be a year or less for the project to be completed. Um, right now, one of the issues will be getting the actual building itself because this is going to be, I wouldn't say a kit, but a metal building that'll be ordered from components. And a lot of those components are longer lead times now. So, But we're looking forward to getting that done. Um, <clears throat> we did get some good news from uh, Congressman Maloney's office today and Congressman Maloney in perp in person saying that our uh, request for funding looks positive. Uh, we requested $2 million for that project and we are, uh, it's looking good. It's in committee right now. They sent some questions back. I sent answers back. Uh, it was quite a few questions. So somebody really looked at it. Um, it was about 10 different questions. I sent back probably a three paragraph response to each one of those just to really provide as much detail as possible for them and to let them know how important this job is to the entire town. Um, you know, we have 50 square miles of town, 60 miles of roads, 30 of which are dirt. So we have a lot of unique circumstances. We are also under incredible pressure from tourism. Um, you know, for a town of 10,000, we'll probably see 250,000 visitors this year. So that's a lot of wear and tear on our infrastructure. It's a lot of wear and tear for the machinery we need to work these roads. We have specialized machines that go out, you know, nobody else has graders anymore. We have two. So, uh, and they're big, expensive machines. That Volvo grader is a $275,000 machine. So, and they, so they don't come cheap and they require a lot of maintenance. And we need the space for that and we need proper working conditions. So we're, we have to do this, but we're really hopeful. And it is, the funds are a matching grant. So, but we've done a lot of in-kind in work so far. So we would be able to match some of that with in-kind labor. We expect to expend some money. We just are hoping that we don't have to expend the entire ticket. But it does look good. Uh, as I said, Congressman Maloney seemed to think that it was viewed as favorable, and we're hoping to see that money when it comes in. We're also looking for our part of the American Relief Plan um, 
should be here by June 11th. We're expecting about $700,000 for the town. There's $1.025 million coming in all, but that's for the entire town, the villages and everything. So we're thinking our portion of that will be about $700,000. We really need that money after a year like this. Our revenue is down about 80% this year. So it's hard to balance a budget on those numbers, especially when you want to do projects. And that's one of the things with the tax cap that really became punitive is towns need to do infrastructure projects. You're going to need buildings, you need bridges, you need roads, all these things. And when you're capped, it makes it really difficult. It may, puts you in a bad position because it makes you look bad. We're not spending money willy nilly. We spend money on things that matter. You know, you need bridges, you need roads. This building is a perfect example of what we needed to do in order to prevent this from literally falling into the earth. So uh, there's going to be some expenditures this year, but we're hoping some, for some funding. We're seeking out other sources, and hopefully they come through for us. So I'm, thank you. I'm really interested to see. We have the bid opening for the highway garage on the 8th. Yeah. I'm interested to see where the numbers come in because there was a lot of interest, a lot of bidders. Mm -hmm. um, there was a list of them. They came in, did the walkthrough, got all the plans. I'm really curious as to see where where these numbers are going to fall. So on Monday, we'll we'll know that, the 8th. Well, so. Hopefully they come in low. <laughs> well, it should be competitive, I hope. Yeah, it will be competitive. You get that many people bidding. It'll be interesting to see the range, too, right. just like it was for this building. So, um, Cemetery Committee. Okay, the Cemetery Committee. We did, uh, Habitat performed a, along with the committee members, a spring cleanup, obviously a lot over the winter, a lot of tree limbs and so forth come down. Um, if you take a look at the cemeteries now, they're, they're in very good shape. Um, obviously, as we talked about last month, the work is continuing now on Mountain Avenue. If you go near the school, you can see we're closing down pretty much on, in my opinion, of uh, finishing Mountain Avenue. I believe personally that um, that will be moving over to Cedar Street no later than the fall. So um, that's very positive. We're taking on some of the larger stones. These go well into the ground, require uh, sophisticated uh, foundations. You know, you have some of these that have fallen. They might have fallen well over 100 years ago. And now you're picking them up, and you're, you're they're see being, the names are being presented for the first time in a, a very long time, because some of these go all the way back towards the revolution. So um, I think uh, the stonemasons deserve a great deal of credit, along with the committee members, for, for working to keep uh, to make these cemeteries the way they are. And the Rich Shea's original idea of getting this started, um, because originally when I first started in this, uh, <laughs> they were they needed a great deal where it felt like it was never going to happen like well how are we ever going to get all of these done because mountain avenue and cedar street were in very bad shape yeah. and uh i think the town should be very proud of how these have turned out so that will be continuing that work as we go on thank you thank you mike thanks for all your work on that <clears throat> yeah if you don't respect your past you really don't know where you're going in your future so it is super important work uh there's a lot of a lot of history in those places, and a lot of our relatives are there, so. That's right. Putnam County Legislator. Nancy was unavailable to, to be here this evening. We, we did see her this afternoon at the yeah. press conference, so I know she's working tonight. She had a prior commitment. Yeah. All right, on to the agenda. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> The first item on the agenda is a resolution of support for the establishment of a conservation plan task force and development of a conservation plan. And this is a roll call vote. And this All relates right. back to that workshop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, This is in partnership with the DEC, uh, Cornell, Cornell University, the Hudson River Estuary Program, and our good friends at the Highland Land Trust. Um, this plan is going to identify community conservation priorities. We certainly have a lot of those. Um, it also is going to build on plans that we have from the past, Natural Resources Index, the Natural Resources Inventory, the Open Space Inventory. Um, and I, I can't say enough, the updated Natural Resources Inventory that was done by Nicole Padala is just a document everybody should take a look at. It really, that's impressive work by a, a resident, local resident. And, um, her parents should be really proud of her. You know, she did that for free as an intern one summer. It was, and it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just fluff. It was a lot of hard science in there and a real update. So our thanks to her. Um, there'll be no cost to the town for this program. 
We're going to be looking for five volunteers to serve on the board. Uh, it's important work to preserve what we have here. As time goes on, you see more and more what's happening on the outskirts of Phillips Town, and you realize how special this place is, and we need to steward that. So with that, if, does the board have any comments on this? Do, do we have volunteers lined up? I mean, I'm thinking we're supposed to have five on this committee. We haven't heard anything. I'm sure it won't be hard to find them. Yeah, so uh, but with that, I'd, could I get a motion on the resolution? So moved. So this will be a roll call vote. Councilwoman Farrell. Aye. Vote aye. Councilman Van Tassel. Aye. Vote aye. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilman Leonard. Aye. And I vote aye. The resolution carries. Next item is a resolution approving the following change order for the town hall renovation project in the amount of negative ten thousand dollars, <laughs> and this is nunk pro. <laughs> this is nunk pro tunk, um, and it's a negative change order to credit back the monies associated with the unused portion of the bid allowance. So here's an unusual circumstance: yes. mm -hmm. someone giving back money. <laughs> uh, MC Electric, really to be commended for the work they've done in this town hall. Really beautiful work here. Mark was a pleasure to work with the entire time. And the fact that he was very fair with the town, kept his change orders to a minimum, and actually now is returning $10,000, which he probably could have argued for. Um, we've had other contractors try it, but uh, Mark just submitted this on his own. He came to the closeout meeting, all his documentation in place, a complete binder for the town, handed it over, and also handed us this credit for $10,000. So, very professional. Very professional. yes, he's a consummate. Professional. So with that, could I get a resolution uh, accepting and approving this change order for negative $10,000? So moved. I got to agree. I did meet Mike Mark quite a few times, and he was very good. All of his people on his team were very good, easy to yeah. work with. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it, he was, he, you know, probably one of the best uh, contractors we had here. Yeah, it did a lot of coordination for us, too. So, and not a lot of whining. No, no. <laughs> you know, he got things done. You know, you talked yep. to him, and he, he, he did what he said he was going to do. He did. Can I get a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Thank you, and thanks to MC Electric. Next item on the agenda is a resolution accepting the proposal from Software Consulting Associates for a tax collection system upgrade in the amount of $5,800. What's this all about? It's essentially a forced upgrade. Eventually, by, by next year, our systems, some of the features aren't going to work, is basically what he told me. Forced is this, upgrade. Does this allow people to pay online, this system, at all? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we does. already allow. Yeah, yeah I know, but I remember when many years ago we didn't have that capability. Yeah, this no, was we, part we, of it, I thought. You know? Yes, no, we will still have the option to pay online. Yeah. Um, it's we, just kind we, of merging a lot of things together, and it'll give us more options in terms of being yeah, able to, like, email bills directly from the system as opposed to saving them as PDFs and... Mm -hmm. Little yeah. things that kind of add up. Just a real quick question, Terry. Do you, how many, what percentage would you say pay online? Was it a small percentage? A very small yeah, percentage. That's what I yeah, yeah. Okay. And I mean, it's coming down to see you. Well, it's funny because this, I, I really thought that this year we would have gotten a lot more online tax payments just because of COVID, and you'd be surprised. There is a fee associated with it, but we don't see know, that don't fee. See that know, fee isn't ours. I know it is. That's the, the company the that processes, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I think, think it's a 2% fee. Yeah, I think it's a, yeah, that's why it's a deterrent for people not paying mm -hmm. online, to be honest wow. with you. Yep. I mean, we take a look at this this year. Well, and my about. other thing is I would really like to look into taking cards, because that's another thing, too, when people oh, come absolutely. in. Like, in the yeah. office, Correct. so. Because yeah, yeah. that's something that we've never done before. So, so. You want to put this on hold, Richard, what you're no, no, we're gonna have to. We have to do this now in order to get through. This I mean, year. we could wait another month or two. That's a because by the end of the year, it's gonna we're gonna right, be forced right. to do it. So ultimately, this is happening. Yes. Yeah. Until we find, yes. unless we go with another software unless, provider. Yeah. I mean, is that something that you'd be interested in looking into, or? I mean, I could. Yeah, I could look into it. I would just to, yeah, you know. If that's the case. We could put and this on. And from what I understand, just from talking to a couple of other municipalities, we are one of the only municipalities that uses this specific this um, software consulting associates. Well, let's, Red Hook. let's take a look at so it. I believe Putt Valley is the only other local yeah, municipality that uses it. Is what they're using. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, for now, I, we're married yeah. to this. Till the end of the year. Till the yeah. end of the year. Okay. 
I just want to make sure. Is there an option for not paying? <laughs> I mean, <Sure>. yeah. <laughs> It'll just come back to bite you in a few years. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll have to keep paying. Um, so could I get a motion on the resolution accepting the proposal from Software Consulting? Anybody? Do you want to table it? I don't think we're going to throw it. Well, I mean, there's no sense in tabling if it's if it's ultimately has to happen. But, but unless, way. like, if I can find another company oh, before I, I the end of the year. Well, I'm not hearing what you're saying. Sorry. No, yeah. If I can reach out to a couple of other yeah, yeah. municipalities and find out, like, what other software oh, they're right. using and maybe. Get out of this before the end of the year. That's yeah. what I mean. Okay. No. Can, all right. Yeah. Then. Well, yeah. Motion to table the uh, resolution. So, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Uh, Boy, I I got it in stereo. I am. Boy. It must be the heat. <laughs> Okay, next is a resolution accepting the retirement of Karen Vergidamo from the Phillipstown Recreation Department effective June 11th. 29 years. Yeah, 29 Woo years, you told me. You couldn't go 30? I know, that's why I said you can't go 30. <laughs> and then it'd be like, you can't go 32. <laughs> well, Karen certainly has been an asset at REC for all these years. Um, a family that is so deeply enmeshed in the town of Phillipstown. Everything, yeah. I mean, everybody knows the Virgidamos. Um, our heartfelt thanks to Karen for her years and years of service. Uh, there's going to be an event for Karen, so we'll all be there and be able to raise a glass to her at that point. But um, I'm sure she's looking forward to this, seeing more of her grandkids and things like that. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they will. So with that, could I get a motion on the resolution? So moved. We will miss Karen. She's yes. welcoming yeah. presence at the rec center. I have a smile. Yes. I'm in that door. Like, yeah. And easy. Yes. <laughs> Another person without trauma. Yeah. We like that. All right, could I get a second on the resolution? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye vote aye. Uh, our best to Karen in her years of retirement. She certainly has earned it. Congratulations and good luck. Yeah. Next is a resolution adopting a negative secret, a negative declaration under SECRA in regards to the proposed Town Highway Department headquarters renovation project. And this is a roll call vote. So uh, more with the highway garage. This is part of the State Environment, Environmental Quality Review Act process that even municipalities are compelled to go through. Um, this is an egg deck, so there isn't going to be a lot of action that needs to be taken up there. We're taking a building down and putting an in-kind structure up. Um, so it's, it's not overly complicated, thank goodness, because I know as people have seen on the planning board, these can get complicated. <laughs> so uh, good for us. So with that, could I get a motion on the resolution adopting an egg deck? So moved. Second. All right. Councilman Van Tassel. Aye. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilman Leonard. Aye. Councilwoman Farrell. Aye. And I vote aye. Resolution carries. Thank you. Next is a resolution determining the town's exemption from local zoning in regards to the proposed town highway department headquarters renovation project. And this is a roll call vote. So this is a matter of state law. Municipalities are exempt from local zoning. It's not as if we're going to go stomping over anybody's laws, but, uh, it does streamline the process slightly. Um, we're, we will be working with Nelsonville anyway. We, when we do a project anywhere is with this building, we provide the plans to the municipality. They'll see everything before things get going. The has been set yeah, so we're, <clears throat> we like to dot all the I's, cross all the T's, make everybody feel comfortable. But I think people will feel a lot more comfortable when that area looks a lot better. <laughs> so. Uh, with that, could I get a motion on a resolution determining the town's exemption from local zoning? Second. With that, Councilman Farrell. Aye. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilman Van Tassel. Aye. Councilman Leonard. Aye. And I vote aye. Another one carries. Next is a resolution authorizing the town clerk to advertise for the submission of public bids on the contract for demolition of the highway department garage. And this, again, is a roll call vote. Uh, we had considered doing this in-house, but it, it just got too complicated. Um, plus, we have work to do for our men. So if we contract this out, we feel like it'll probably, it'll probably work out better. Um, it's just there's too many moving parts there now. And it also sets the stage for a contractor coming in and 
coming to a completely clean slate. So uh, with that, could I get a motion on a resolution authorizing the town clerk to advertise for bidders for the demolition of the highway garage? So moved. Second. Second. All right, here we go. Councilman Farrell. Aye. Councilman Leonard. Aye. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilman Van Tassel. Aye. And I vote aye. The hits keep rolling. Next is a resolution accepting the proposal for construction management services for the Town Highway Department Headquarters renovation project pre-construction phase from the Palumbo Group in the amount of $14,000 and authorizing Supervisor Shea to sign the related documents. So we needed construction management services in order to get the bids together, uh, go through the pre-construction process. Uh, so it was under the... Um, the uh, the amount that is mandated by New York State where it would have to go out to bid. So with that $14,000 amount, we were comfortable, very comfortable working with Palumbo. They've provided great service. It has been, the process has been so easy so far. And they think of things that we just would not think of. They do this a lot. Right. So. Um, they probably saved us more than $14,000. Easily. Saved, saved me a million dollars worth of headaches. <laughs> so. Um, we are uh, very comfortable with this amount. Uh, they certainly, there's been enough meetings already yes. and certainly plenty of service, plenty of documentation from them every step of the way through the bid process. They will do the bid opening for us and they have pre-qualified all the bidders, which was another big deal. They're used to this sort of thing. They know all the players. Um, it makes things a lot easier for the town. With that, could I get a motion on the resolution accepting the uh, Construction management services from the Palumbo Group in the amount of fourteen thousand dollars. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. And I vote aye. Next on the agenda is to schedule any workshops or meetings. Um, I would request, request that the July meeting be moved from this, the the uh, first to the eighth, if possible. Oh, jeez. <laughs> move to the first to the fourth. I won't be here on the. So, uh, You're going to miss a lot of fun. You're going to miss a good time. You're going to be fireworks here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have an issue with that. Does anyone else have an issue? No, no I just won't be here. You want to zoom in? If we have a zoom meeting, I'll sure zoom in. Sure. We're not going to have one. Okay. We'll call you. If we, we call you up. If you want. All right. All right. Uh, so we'll move that meeting to July 8th. Anyone else have any reason to meet for a workshop? We need to discuss the marijuana legislation going forward. Uh, we did get a letter from Steve Gabba suggesting that we meet. Um, I don't know if I think the village is interested in having a joint meeting. I'm not 100% sure yet, but uh, we need to um, make a decision as to how we are going to handle it. Yeah, my understanding is you either are allowing it or specifically disallowing it if we if we don't do anything if we don't opt out then yes it would be allowed. yes if, if we opt out then it would go it would be up to a permissive referendum in order to get it on a ballot uh, at the next regular election to allow it to happen so, right yeah. i don't know um would that be on this election year johnny or a following if, if you want it in this november I believe yeah if it has to be done by the end of august so okay. you're going to have to meet July and make this decision. Yeah, some of the, there are some specifics. I mean, you may, and I'm sure the state has laws regarding where you can situate these things. You know, my concern would be you don't want sit, situated over by the school. Right. You, you certainly don't want, you know, it in your face. Um, I also have mixed feelings about, well, I don't know. I, it's complicated. They're going to gener generate revenue some of that revenue will come to the municipality. Right. Right. So, I mean, it's, if it's not happening here, it's going to happen somewhere else. You know that. I would, um, I would like to bring in Danielle and get her opinion on, you know, on the use in, and just get some alternative opinion. Myself, I would opt, opt out and put it back to the voters and let them decide. Yeah. You know, if there's that much enthusiasm for it. I'm sorry. If there's that much enthusiasm, then it would go, you know, there would be a permissive referendum and it would be put on the ballot and let the voters decide. But yeah. uh, my, yeah. my choice would be to opt out. It, it gets a little complicated. Permissive referendums are not 
it's not an easy not an easy right. thing. You really it's a, that's going to cost something too to even just get it on the ballot. Yeah. Um, you know the other part of it is, and I don't want to go too deep into the weeds. You know what's destroyed more lives, alcohol or marijuana? <laughs> you know we, we certainly have no shortage of uh, bars and drinking going on here in the town and everywhere across the whole country. So uh, I, I don't you know. It's, it's complicated. I think it's a good idea to sit down with the village, sit down with our attorney, hash out the details, hear what, what Danielle has to say from her perspective, and then make a decision on it. Um, Should we plan something for July? Well, we'd have to reach out to the village and see what the availability is. I'd like to get a joint meeting so we can get it done in one night rather than we do something, they do something, then we all get together. It's three separate meetings. Um, so you want to see if you get something late in late July then? Sure. I mean, all right. I'll want reach to out to the village. Set a tentative yeah. Wednesday date. Somebody can, you know, if you Both shoot them a couple of dates. Should, right? Yeah, we can. We're set for every Wednesday, so we could always meet up here with them. Yeah. I'll reach out to Nelsonville and to Cold Spring. Yeah. I might. Certainly would like to get some revenue, <laughs> but it, it's like. No, we're not getting it from the county not at all. The county stands to make quite a, quite a bit of money on, on this. Yeah. They're meeting expect exceeding their uh, budget proposals already for sales tax oh, for the year. Sales tax for the past five years. Yeah. I mean, they've exceeded millions and millions and millions of dollars, and we're not seeing any of that. And uh, that really sticks with me. Without a doubt, sharing that tax would create incentives here. It would actually cr create more money. The counties, which are most of them in the state that have done so, have proven that's the fact so it's disappointing yeah we're one of only five counties out of 51 in the whole state that doesn't do revenue sharing westchester does it duchess does it orange does it rockland does it putnam no sir i mean and that money's generated here and i know we say it we've been beating a dead horse here and we've gone to them with so many proposals over the years but it it just is one of the most unfair things that the county does this town that money's generated here it leaves here and we never see it again and you know we're talking about a lot of money leaving this community every year in the form of not only sales tax but the county property tax and the amount of service there's no way in on god's green earth you can tell me that we're getting eight million dollars worth of service from the county every year because we're not so and i know oh, we partner with you you know I, I'd like to have a partner to give me some of the money back. So we could use some of the money for infrastructure too. I mean, I know we're hurting. We have 250,000 tourists that come, as you said earlier. Yeah. And we only have a couple of bathrooms in the whole town. To I mean, there's there's a strain somewhere. on every aspect in this town of infrastructure: garbage collection, road maintenance, bathrooms, everything. And let's face facts: the draw to Putnam County is here. It is <laughs> Phillips Town. Phillips Town. Yeah. There's talk no about visitor. About Visitors, I, yeah, I don't see people hiking around the main streets of Carmel, so. But our money hikes over there by 301. You gotta keep that road going smooth, because that's where the money goes. So. Are we gonna discuss the pollinator garden outside um, Town Hall? I think yeah, Crystal I saw, I saw, proposed yeah. a modest amount. I think it was 775 or? That was 1500 or something. But she was reduced it? it just to- All right, well, to I'll reach out to her. If we're talking about a reasonable amount, we can go ahead and do it. And I'll, like I said, I'm willing to donate my next check towards it. So get it down to 500 bucks for the town's expenditure. That's fine. We'd like to get something in front yeah, of the building. It's looking a little, get started, a little bare we'll out there. Yeah, we can chip away at it, yeah. you know, year by yeah. year. Yeah. All right. Um, so we'll reach out to the village, both villages, and then see what happens. All right. Should we pick a tentative date in July, a Wednesday in July, or are we just going to leave it open? Uh, pick one. Pick one. So we're down to the third. July 14th, 21, or 28? 21. 21. 21. Okay. Here we go. Uh, next is the code enforcement monthly report, and it's for May of 2021. Total fees collected was $26,236.51. There were 44 total permits issued. There were four additions, alterations, or repairs to residential buildings. 
one addition, alteration, or repair to a commercial building. 39, all other permits, including pools, decks, sheds, plumbing, HVAC, et cetera. Um, 15 certificates of occupancy, one work, uh, stop work order issued, and one inspection of public assembly. All right, our thanks to Greg Warner, the code enforcement officer and the whole department over there. Um, things just seem to run really well. If, yes. And we certainly have uh, <clears throat> upped our, our take on permits. Uh, they follow through on a lot of things, lapse permits, all those sorts of things. So it's really seems to be working out well. No, I'm not. I, I used to get a lot of complaints. <laughs> people are happy with him. He just does his job, he upholds the code, and works with people. Yeah, so and he's willing to work with people, and he is even-handed. Everybody gets the same treatment. Yep. So, um, Anything else from the board? I just want to take this opportunity at the end of the school year to thank and congratulate the Haldane Central School District and the Garrison School District for making our children's um, back to school experience very um, comfortable and safe. And I think they really did an extraordinary job in ensuring that our children's education continued. Um, I was really impressed with all the outdoor work and the donations from the Haldane School Foundation and the Haldane PTA, as well as the Garrison um, Parents Association. So, Thank you to all for making our children's back to school experience a positive one this spring. I, I wasn't optimistic that they were going to get as many days in as they did at the start of the year, but I'll tell you, they really plugged along and they kept the students in there. And um, I mean, I was comfortable sending my kids to school. No matter what was going on, I'm always comfortable sending them to Haldane. But, and I'm sure Garrison is the same situation. But you're absolutely correct. It was a, a feat to get this year in. They even, you know, towards the end, they got three sports in, and it was, and it's fun. And getting back to the vaccines, we're almost back to normal. <laughs> we're actually going to sporting events. We, we went to lacrosse games. We went to football games. And we're this close. If people can just keep the vaccines going. Get vaccinated. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends. Get them out. Get them vaccinated. There's there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, you might get sick for a few hours, a day, but it sure beats the alternative without a doubt. So. Yeah, not only that, I think the um, the student athletes as well. They put the over the twenty thousand mark, right? The, was it the, yeah. the all, yeah. all the athletes got together and, all, and encouraged other students to get vaccinated as well. So yes. a lot of the kids in Haldane, yeah. twelve and above got vaccinated already, which is a great thing. That's right. And they helped the seniors, too, which was with the technology for signing yes, up for right. vaccination. Yeah. So it yeah, was, it was great. a great collaboration for uh, kids to work with seniors. Yeah, let's keep, uh, keep up the good work. But our thanks to the school districts. Terrific work. Uh, one, I have one other item, and I'll stop, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we, the Memorial Day parade didn't go on as normal, but the work that the veterans have still done in the town, um, I had the pleasure, my son and I went and helped with the flags at the cemetery. Bobby mm -hmm. was there. You can't imagine the amount of work that goes into, right, Bobby? Oh, yeah. There was hours and hours just putting these flags. Um, these guys just do it. Nobody knows about it. You know, they were all over there sweating. Uh, it was the hottest day last week, and, um, and I was happy to be a part of it. And uh, your, our, my hat goes off to, well, not for just what they've done for the country, but what they continue to do to keep things... Um, the memorial continuing for the fallen veterans. So I'd just yeah. like to thank them all. Yeah, and I'm hoping the parade uh, comes back. I would hate to think that that real marker in a year uh, will be lost because it's a touching moment when you're at the cemetery and the entire community is there. And you know, you have, it's just that real sense of a small town coming together over something that's really important. From the little leaguers this big to the 98 yeah. year old veterans. Yeah, and that, when you lose that, you really do lose something. I mean, having the high school band there, having the vets there. So I, I'm hoping some of the younger vets uh, take up that mantle because the older guys got old. Yes. I mean, you got a lot of them are, you know, well into their 80s and 90s. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard seeing that not happen. So, uh, yeah, we'll encourage them. I agree, Richard. It's a, it's a night. Um, everyone looks forward to the parade every year. And we just would be, it would be a shame not to have. I think they'll, they'll be able to. They don't do it next year. I hope so. I think so. I got one or two little things. You should have seen a request. Did you get an email today from the solar people? 
you have to approve something so we can move the solar project? Soon? I didn't so, see it. Okay. I'll take a look. So let's take a look at that. And then also, too, I know last week, last month we discussed, um, I was able to get new stone around the quarry pond up at the dog park up there. So the new stone was in, and we got a couple of requests from some residents. So I just want to let people know that's been completed. I know Richard was look, also looking down about possibly breaking that um, park into two sections. I don't know if you were able to work on that I'm at all. I'm meeting a fencing person there next week. Okay. So great. <clears throat> the only two things. Oh, one other thing. I just encourage people to give blood. The, the blood supply here in New York is down to like a two-day that's all there is, that's all they have right now. So a lot of people haven't been given blood during the COVID, but if you're able to give blood, I just encourage people to do so. All right, thank you, Bob. Anything else? Anything from the audience? Yes, Liz. I have a question, why don't you go over there and I ask you? Well, if you want to be heard, you come over here. If you, if you just want us to hear it, you can ask us from there. Oh, yeah. I'll answer that. I implemented that my first year on the board. Okay. You're only allowed one voucher per year per family. Okay, so it's not like you can get one every single week. And it's for a one time only, it's $30, and it's up to, the, I think, 500 pounds. Anything above that, they have to pay. Okay, so it's for 30. It's a $30 value. And I think it's. Right, and I think it's 500 pounds is what you get for that. And if you go there with 600 pounds, you have to pay the difference. Right. Okay? And then again, one voucher per family per year until we, we have a budget. When that budget is run out, though, for that particular amount, it's that we can't get any more vouchers for the year. Right. Do we know are there any vouchers left? Oh, yeah, there's yeah. vouchers. And just to clarify, it's, it's drop-off only. I do not believe Royal will come oh, to your house no, and pick no, it up. No, you no, have no, to take no, it to Royal. There is no pickup. Not for 30 bucks. You, no. yeah. you have to <laughs> take it no to Royal. This, yeah, that, that that program replaced the townwide cleanup. We yes. used to have yes. townwide cleanup, and it got so expensive that we wanted to offer something, and Bobby came up with the voucher plans. You know, the other amazing thing was every time we had a cleanup, I mean, we would do 40, 40 yarders, yes. which is ridiculous. It just says, and this is every year. So, you know, I, I just don't know where the stuff was coming from. I mean, it's, uh, you know, and... We, we were hoping that this would offset things, and that's why we suspect that any dumping that's happening in the town is by people not from this town. I certainly would hope that no one in this town would go dumping on our roads. Um, but you know, we'd get a we'd get a forty-yard dumpster full of tires up there, but there was just more stuff. And then we we had to call that Betty Budney Tag Sale Day because <laughs> I think Betty kept about forty yards of stuff. But it, it was nice. She would. You know, she always had people in mind. If somebody needed something and she saw it, she'd take it and then bring it down to Church Street. So, but, um, you know, if people need a voucher, come and get one. Mm -hmm. It's in lieu of the townwide cleanup, as was stated. Is there any way to put that on the website somewhere? It's on the website. Under what? Because I look for it. I'm... I'd have to go look. I know it's on the website, though. It yeah, might a, just be a general post. It's a program, the search yeah. bar in the top. Uh, I think I looked on no, if you just put in the little search on the thing and click and put in like vouchers or royal, it should pop up. Because we've, this is, I mean, this isn't, we've been doing this, I believe, since at least 2017. Yeah, that's been on the board six years, so I it's think. six years. Yeah. 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 While we're talking about garbage and so forth like that, we're still looking into e waste. Were you, were you looking at the yes. county? Is yeah, the county still looking, working on something? The county has a group, a task force that's looking at it. Um, it yeah, but we, we're, we're, you know, we've been busy here last, but we're still looking at a, a possible e waste solution here for the town of Phillipstown as well. 
Um, We're also just, another incredibly aggravating thing that not only is the county not providing us with sales tax revenue, they're also removing the very, very small services they used to provide. Yeah. That was a county service and suddenly gone. Yeah. You're on your own. Yeah, it's been and that was like one month's notice. Guess what? No more e-waste. So <laughs> this is far from a partnership. It's you're on your own. Please give us money. Hopefully, if the county doesn't come through with something in the next few months, I don't know where they're going to. Maybe we can look. Definitely, we. I looked at a few options, and it's you know we're still thinking about it. It's not. A, it's it's pretty easy to impl implement, but that means you know you have uh, our tenant up there has to start taking money or cash or, or checks or something like that, which isn't the easiest thing to do either. You know, so we have to figure it out. Yeah, I know. You know, it, the people to talk to is Kent. Kent has the most amazing recycling center in the county. Um, they have a lot of volunteers over there, but they do a spectacular job on, you know, a very, very small budget. So eventually we're going to have to do something. Otherwise, you're going to start finding these things all over the road, too, along with my queen-size mattress. But. <laughs> there was someone who had their hand up. Uh, yes, Maggie. Do I need that? Let's go with that. Yeah, it would be helpful if you did. <laughs> you're welcome. My name is Megan Cotter, and I'm actually, this question's for Judy. Um, you spoke with the rec center regarding the enrollment for preschool. I was just wondering if they have any information on the preschool time frame. Um, I know that they've been talking for many years about extending the time to 2 o'clock. Um, however, I don't think that's ever actually been implemented. So I'm just curious if they have gotten there. They Are they still working that. on it? Yeah, I can raise that issue at the next commission meeting. Yeah, there's several, I know several yes. parents within the community that um, they Good definitely way. want to send their children there, but it's the, the time frame is just unrealistic. So they would like it extended to 2 p.m.? To 2, and when my oldest daughter was there, they were talking about doing it, and it just doesn't seem like it's coming to fruition, so... I don't know, maybe somebody along this lovely board can help push that along. There, there so. was, um, Happy there to raise it at the next commission. Yeah, that would be great. Just great. so we sure. can go back to the community and just let them know where we stand. And you know, maybe parents will be able to make a better decision on where they want to send their children. All right. I can remember when I was the liaison to the rec, mm -hmm. there was a, um, a process that they were going through to extend yeah. the hours. And part of it was becoming state certified, which right. they did. I'm 90%, 99% sure they did achieve that. But in order to keep the kids there that long, you have to serve them lunch. So that adds another step to the process. Yeah, no, this process has been going on. My oldest is going to be 10. So right. this process has been going on since she, she was two. Right. And we just continue to get the same information we're working on we're, just tell us are you working on it yeah, and work where do you stand or we're just not capable of getting this time frame in because then you know everybody's always talking oh i'm sending to the rec they're going till two they're going to two and in retrospect they have never gotten to two and if they are going to two they need to let the community that would be know like a full school day so right, you, right. so yeah. they just let us know if you're not going to do it that's fine but just don't keep telling the community that this is going to be getting done when in fact we're eight years later and we're still in the same spot that we were so waiting for it to go to two waiting it for it to be completed i don't know what the process is or who has to complete that process well it but, needs approval too for as john was saying from the state you know you have to serve yeah, lunch yeah. and then get approval that was to the do last it. i knew that they had gotten the state certification um but there were still other processes right. that had to be had to be completed so if we can just let people know where we are maybe yeah, in that can. process yeah, yeah. Sir. an yeah. update would just be nice for, sir. for the sure. community terrific all right thank you thank you thank you Thanks. betsy how are you um, i'm interested in the conservation name. okay and, uh, so just leave your name with tara and absolutely yep that won't be a problem <laughs> thank, you. thank you thank you anything else neil Do we have them? Yeah. Greg has them as a set? Um, I don't believe Greg has them. They are available online, and um, the Village of Nelsonville has them now. We gave them to the Village of Nelsonville, but you're certainly welcome to. Uh, it's on rev plans. It went out to the bidders, but it, yeah, we, it's, it's a public document at this right. point. Yes, yeah, it is. I guess that was my question. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. Yep. Kelly, you want, got anything? You want anything? <laughs> I mean, we're gonna hit, going for the triple crown here. All right. Uh, vacancies. I can't believe we can't get somebody for the BAR. Really interesting work. Not a big commitment and a real service that we need. So somebody in the town, we need one person. Board of Assessment Review, please step up. I'm going to work on somebody this week. Yeah. I think we got a possible mm -hmm. case. Don't, manis, don't make us send the goon squad out. <laughs> if you see John and Bobby in your front yard, you better lock the door. <laughs> You're going on to BAR. <laughs> All right. Approval of vouchers, General. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. aye vote aye. Highway. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. aye vote aye. Continental Village Park District. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. vote aye. Continental Village Water District. Second. All in favor? Aye. I vote aye. You know, just to make a point before we head out, we zip through these approvals at the end. That does not mean that this has been a zip zip thing. Every one of these vouchers is removed, is reviewed every single month by the town board. Right. Goes across my desk, goes through all the council people, multiple people have to sign off on them. Many of them are pulled at times. Uh, for questions and answers. So um, I know we sort of glaze over this at the end, but all the work has been done prior to getting here for the meeting. So be comfortable that the town board is reviewing all the expenses for the town. That's Can I get a motion to? It's my rainy day fun. Your rainy day fun, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Doug, get ready, we're coming down. Uh, <laughs>